In this video, you will be introduced to embedded systems from a practical context, giving you examples of use cases and illustrating features of embedded systems, such as what is an embedded system, why do we use embedded systems, and understanding the role of modularity in design principles, which is especially useful in complex designs. Embedded systems are devices that are designed for a specific function. They are often not designed to be user-friendly and are often built into larger systems and the user would not have direct contact with all of the embedded system hardware. They also only tend to be compatible with a limited range of software and programming languages. In order to gain an appreciation of the use case of embedded systems, it is helpful to consider a few interesting applications. Robotics use embedded systems to control movements and often use a vast array of inbuilt sensors and movement planning algorithms that take observations, use code to decide what to do next, then implement. Wearable health monitoring devices are used domestically and in more clinical settings. Depending on the use case, we may require certain functionality to be available to increase accuracy and provide more insight into our health. In this case, sensor technologies and computational power are the most important considerations. There is no need to produce a physical output, so the share of the power and the efficiency requirements are different to the robotics application. Next is drones. The use of embedded systems is similar to robotics because we have sensors and control algorithms to decide what to do next. The difference is that a drone is always flying and often in a real world setting, we would need to consider in-flight stability. This would require much faster computation and decision-making to react to sudden fluctuations. Final example is in self-driving cars and lane assist technology. This is a very complex system and must be optimized to each car design and steering sensitivity. From this, you should be able to see that embedded systems have more of a purpose and are better at what they do, especially compared to a general purpose computer. There are performance, cost, reliability, design complexity, and many more reasons to consider using an embedded system rather than a general purpose computer. For example, consider the lane assist feature. This needs to link camera, control hardware, and computational power efficiently. If the lane assist is too slow to react, then it could cause an accident, putting all road users in danger. In this case, existing computer vision technology might not be designed for the reaction times needed. So from a design perspective, you would need to consider the electrical noise present, propagation delays, how the microcontroller interacts with memory, using a memory type that optimizes computational efficiency, the power requirements, and more. The only option is to design a system using existing hardware to perform exactly as required. Another example is considering the health monitoring device. Let's say you aim to design a wearable health tracker within a fixed budget. However, existing electronics are too expensive, but they come with features that you might not need outside of a hospital setting. In this case, an embedded system would be required to deliver the functionality you need in order to reduce the cost to manufacture. The trade-off is slightly more design time, but it is a one-time delay. Once it is designed, you don't need to do it again. Also, designing an embedded system would give you more over exactly how the monitoring device interacts with software, rather than have it dictated to you. Modularity is a very important design principle, as it can allow for more efficient design. The idea is to use teams of engineers and other professions to design some hardware and software for a part of an overall design. To explore this, take the drone project, for instance. Some important components are controlling the propeller speed and control system, 
the computer vision for direction control, landing sensors that need to communicate with propeller speed settings, and vibration and stability control. Each component will have its own sensors and control hardware. They can be designed separately and then be combined into a larger system in order to build the drone. The teams will need to communicate what they are doing and how, often overseen by a project manager. None of the sensors in each part will affect the sensors used in other parts, but the result will need to be communicated to, to a main controller. For example, the propeller speed may be affected by landing sensors to ensure a gentle landing, but the way the propeller speed is controlled is more to do with hardware and how the signal from the landing sensors is interpreted. Modularity also enables you to update sections on one at a time, depending on budgeting and time restraints. The updated sections should fit into the place of the older system and work immediately. You should be able to see how this design principle allows large technology companies to deliver extremely complex designs and keep updating them so quickly. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you found this video useful and want to see more content on embedded systems and electronic and computer engineering.